Good morning, everyone. Today is August the 2nd. My name is Anne-Marie Band, and this is the Moneyball Morning for the Benzinga Pro platform. What we want to do today, we've really got not too much going on. We've got a jolt report, but things are kind of quiet. The Fed guys, uh, the different presidents across the patches, they are chatting a bit about this, that, and the other. And then we do have uh, Nancy Pelosi um, on her way to uh, Taiwan, and um, you know she's made a habit of defending them. This just happens to be one of those times she's choosing to defend them, and things are a little bit sticky, right? She's been doing that for 30 years, and so I'm guessing that um, she's expecting that'll be business as usual, unless I put on a tinfoil hat, and then it's something totally different, but I'm not going to do that. So here we are looking at SPY. And these are the big things that we want to pay attention to from a weekly perspective. We're still moving up through the region that was last month. And this line right here shows that we opened a new month. Here's the storyboard. Downward sloping formation, caught in a sideways action, but pressure to the upside. That's what the week is telling us. So from a weekly perspective, it says, hey, pullbacks or buy zones. So if you're looking for something from a weekly perspective, you would wait for a fade to get engaged in the market from a long side of that range. And where might that be? Uh, you know, it's anybody's guess. It could be 404, it could be 400, it could be 395, we don't know. Our job is not really to know that right now. It's to know if we're looking for longs, we don't do anything right now if we're planning on putting it on a swing that's going to last several months, okay, or several weeks. That's what this is telling us. So if we go to the daily, and of course you can see it's saying this a little bit of the same thing here, but I'll explain that when we get to it. Here for the SPY on the day, we notice yesterday was, I don't know, do we want to call this a hammer? Little bit of bearish action coming off of the top of the formation. Remember, when we start slipping into the body of the prior day's candle, we start moving through its edges. And so legitimately, the first time that this begins to happen, as it did yesterday, we said, or day before yesterday, we said, hey, okay, if it loses 412, I probably am going to try and watch it come into first the 50% marker and then all the way here at the opening of that region. That happens to be around 407.50. What do you know? Here we are testing that number right around now, okay, and bouncing from it. So this, far away from a very tight moving average, Reversion to the mean, also very likely, also corroborating this that says, hey, if you want to go long, you might want to wait. Four hour, we're underneath the moving average. We keep making lower highs and lower lows. We are sitting in a region where we've seen buyers pop in before. So between that 406, 405, and if you're looking at things that aren't memes and are following the broad market, once the SPY gets into that area, you want to start thinking to yourself, uh, you know, maybe I can pick up something. I'll have the wind at my back. All right. So I'm going to put an alert here. Tell us if we've come down into a sport action and if that sport action is going to hold. From a four hour perspective, we're still slipping through. This is the reason that we have that deep in the money call side, because I was expecting this kind of noise before we had ourselves a little bounce. So remember, Time frame continuity. This is downward, and this is downward looking at our slope. So it tells us naturally that our bounces are going to be selling pressure events here at the first pass. So what we want to do is watch it lose the close of the candle, watch the candle bounce, and realize that trend on the two time frames are going to give us a short that will move us into this area. This is a very good way to position yourselves trading using pure price action and momentum in general. So what are we doing right now? It's pretty much straight down. Look at how nice and linear that one hour formation is. But what we have started doing over the last couple of candles is not headed lower. 
So here's the thing. Is it still a short on the bounce? Oh, you betcha. You betcha. Short on the bounce, but the profit margin says, hey, you need to take some profit right around here. Yes, it could break down. Yes. But to preserve your gains, you cut your position in half here. If it breaks down, beautiful. If it holds and then begins to move up, you know, hey, I'm going to be giving back some of that. So I'll get out here and you'll have two gains and it'll look very, very nice. Clean your trades up in motion once your charts stop giving you lower highs and lower lows. When you're trading in a trend and something keeps giving you those lower lows, you're all fine and dandy. The moment it stops, you have to say, hang on, or the moment you see buying pressure, push the chart up. And that's what it looks like from a candlestick perspective, right? That's how it pushes the chart up. All right, a little bit of a learning lesson there, but I wanted to share that anyway. Notice a lot of sellers coming in off of this edge in the queues, forcing price in, but they're still trying to hold a bottom. What do you want to do? Let the chart settle out. This is a lot of negative traction. Easily we come into support. Stop heading lower. Remember, a chart's going to give you good upside pressure event if you have time frames that are telling you the same thing. And right now, what the time frames, oh, my mouse is now dead. What the time frames are telling me is I've got sideways pressure, and so I am going to have a position that's going to be a little bit more difficult to manage if I don't take profit when it comes. All right, that's it, folks. Good luck trading, and I'll see you on the Benzinga Pro platform.